Hello, hello, everyone. Just putting on my gloves. Hey, Stacy, how are you doing? Now, I'm hoping that everything will go smoothly. We have had a little bit of um, a little bit of connection issues, probably due to the time of year and weather and all that. So, hopefully, everything stays connected. But yeah, if I disappear, that's probably it's probably what happened. Yeah, I bet tomorrow's Friday finally. Be nice to have a weekend. What have you been up to since the last live? Oh, do you have a cricket? Oh, wow, that's awesome. Have you tried using it yet? Have you made anything with it? I'd actually considered getting a cricket a while ago, um, probably a couple years ago, but I just didn't have anywhere to put it. So that'll have to be a project for the distant future, I think. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I think, um, did she show that on her video? I think I might have seen it. I've watched so many of them, um, so many of the videos where people were showing um, different things that people had made for them, so I might be getting it mixed up with something else. Oh, you haven't sent it yet. Okay, so I must be thinking of something else then. Well, that'll be awesome. Hopefully it shows up on um, a video for 
you know, when she gets it. Yes, that's probably what it is. I wanted to make I wanted to make stickers, but like I said, the time is something I can do another time probably. <laughs> Hi, Ian. Yes, peppermint and stevia. Why not? I mean, might as well make it taste good. And then I might as well make it look like uh, look like food at the, at the same time. I mean, why not eat the soap? Actually, don't eat soap. It's not good for you. I'll tell you what. I'm going to um, go ahead and pour. I've got some aloe vera juice in here. I'm going to go ahead and mix all this in with the lye water. And get this going because um, otherwise I'll ramble on. So I'm going to put this in with the lye water. It's a little bit off camera. I need to fix my setup here. I'm kind of all over the place. How's your editing going, Ian? Did you finish? Um, and just, just so for anyone who might have hopped in late... This is going to be dishwashing soap. It's going to be solid. And supposedly these last longer than the liquid. Um, I've never directly compared one to the other. But from what I hear from people who use it, they, they really like it because it lasts longer. Um, I've made it before. Uh, several months ago I made, uh, made some. So this is a very similar recipe. It's going to be the orange scented one. And um, I'm going to keep one like one bar back and I'm going to test it and see, you know, how well it works on, on our own dishes because I'd like to get away from using like the plastic bottles. Cause just, I mean, they're a pain to store and, um, you know, round bottles aren't efficient for, you know, saving space. Um, and plus all the plastic. At three fifteen AM. Well, I mean, who needs sleep, right? I'm going to be putting the soap into these cute little um, flower molds. I thought those would be a good size for setting on the uh, kitchen counter. And we've got the sirens again. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to mix these, this uh, light water in with the oils first. This is just coconut oil only. And the reason for that is because it's um, really, really bubbly and really, really cleansing. And it makes a really hard bar. So this would not, this would probably not feel super good on the hands because it's not going to have any super fat in it. So you'd want to wear, you know, like normally you'd want to wear like your dishwashing gloves when you do the dishes with this. Um, but yeah, and it's just, so of course it's going to be vegan and it's organic. And then in here, I've got the um, orange essential oil, essential oil, and I mixed it with a little bit of kale and clay. Um, I've heard that uh, people have better luck getting the orange uh, scent to stick around if there's some kale and clay mixed in with it. And I've never, you know, really experimented with that, so I thought might as well. Yeah, see, see, I thought it'd be really cute. They're kind of happy designed, and since the coconut oil, I'm sorry, the... Um, um, this type of soap with, with just coconut oil is, is such a hard bar of soap, the design should remain in the soap. It shouldn't, you know, come apart. But I have made it, but I have made it into bars before, so it, it can go either way. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and just mix in this oil first. Well, actually, I'll do it after. I'm going to do it after I mix in the lye. Um, turn this around. But I am going to... Uh, yeah. Keep going back and forth on what I want to do. It doesn't really matter. The oil doesn't, I mean, the order I do this in doesn't really matter, but. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pour in the light water, do the oils. The oils are pretty warm. Um, I melted them down and then just left them in the hot water for a while. So 
it's probably a little bit warmer than it should be, but it really doesn't make any difference. It'll still be soap. All right, I'm just going to start by mixing this by hand. I've also put a little bit of sea salt in here and some sugar. The sugar helps with the bubbles, although, um, you know, coconut oil soaps don't typically have any issues with bubbles. And then I also put the aloe, aloe vera in here so that if you do get it on your hands, hopefully it, you know, feels better than it would without it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stick blend this in real quick. So it might get loud. So just a second here. This is taking a lot longer to come together than I expected. Hold on. There we go. Usually coconut oil soaps, by the time I, you know, blend them for five seconds, they're already getting thick. So looks like that's where we're at now. So I'll go ahead and stop real quick. Add in the other oils here. The This is the orange essential oil and the kale and clay. I'm just going to mix it to make sure there's nothing stuck to the bottom. And I'm going to put this in. Yep. Yeah, that thickened up nicely. Okay, just a sec here. Put this on. I'm also not going to be adding any colorants to this because um, I wanted like a more like pure looking bar. So the only color that will come from this is whatever the oil do to it and. Uh, maybe a little bit from the kale and clay, but the kale and clay doesn't really add a whole lot of color. Just going to give that a minute. Looks like we got some bots in the chat. Always nice to have a friendly bot. Went ahead and reported them. Yeah, this is for using on, on dishes, Stacy. So um, the way these will work is, hold on a sec, let me get this, some oil that leaked out here. Um, you would just take the little block of soap and you could take whatever you're going to use to scrub the dishes and you just kind of scrub it on the soap like this and then you wash your dishes with it. Um, and that's part of the reason why I'm not using any color. But really, I mean, it just everybody's different in what they want and I think a lot of people would probably prefer not to have color in it, even though, um, like, if you think about it, like, the liquid soap that we wash soap with um, usually is dyed a color. I've seen blue, um, green, and even, like, a like a red or a pink color. I've seen orange and yellow. So, I mean, you can color it, but just personally, I think that most people would rather have it uncolored, um, even though it won't, the color won't hurt the dishes at all. It won't stain dishes, because I use micas, and those don't really, those shouldn't, anyway, stain dishes. The only way I could see it staining is if you had, like, a crack in, like, a ceramic plate or something, and, like, some of the mica got stuck in the crack, but, like, it, it's not going to stain dishes. How do I get bots in my chats? I don't know. They just show up. 
every now and then we'll do a live and we'll get some bot telling us to click on their link that takes you someplace you don't want to go so i just report them I'm gonna mix this up a little more It is still, it still feels warm, but let's give it a little bit longer. I don't know if we could color the bots. It'd be nice make them a good neon color so we'd be able to ban them easier. Yeah, I've seen some that are um, uncolored. If it looks like eggnog, it's possible that they're either putting something in there that gives it that like thick white color. It could be titanium dioxide. Um, which is something that makes the soaps white. It could be, um, you know, just an ingredient, like um, maybe one of the oils, um, you know, when you turn it into liquid soap and then you dissolve it, dissolve it into the liquid. Um, when they, before they put it into the bottle, it turns white. It could also be oils that were not saponified. So if they put any loose oils in there and then they emulsify it, it can give the liquid a cloudy look to it. Oh, mine looks like eggnog. Oh, <laughs> clearly I'm not paying attention. Um, yeah, it, it does. I mean, if only it tasted like eggnog, or it was eggnog. But yeah, it's... Coconut oil soaps typically turn white, so um, hopefully... Hopefully this will be a nice color. The uh, the sugar I use is like a it's an un unprocessed sugar, so it has like a has the molasses in it still, so it has like a tan. Sometimes we'll tint the soap a little bit of a tan color at first. Um, and then the kale and clay is an off white color. Hi Tanya, welcome. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this a little bit more. I'll get that a minute to sit. See if it starts to thicken up. Oh yeah, it's Friday there. Nice. No, <laughs> Ian, I don't pay for the bots. They just show up on their own. I don't know. I don't even know uh, where they come from. They just show up and try to get us to click on stuff. Yes, happy Thursday to everyone. I hope 2022 is treating you good so far. I need to make some body butter. I might do that on Saturdays. What I'm thinking is maybe on Saturday we can unmold these. And, uh, and then make some body butter. Because I had an order for body butter. I have to make sure I have the fragrance first, though. Also, um, for the next uh, probably week or so, I'm going to be making either non-soap recipes or something like a, like a different type of soap recipe, like this one where it's like 100% coconut oil. 
Uh, maybe we can do like um, a Castile soap or something because I'm running low on my oils. I just ordered some and so they should be here probably in the next week or so. Um, but the way supplies are going, um, there might be a delay. So just in case, you know, I'll have some other stuff lined up. So um, yeah, like I said, Saturday, probably going to do the body butter. And then once I get all the oils in, I'm going to be trying to make all the request soap. So the dinosaur soap, the um, lighthouse soap, and then I know Ian asked about the orange, that weird scrubby soap from that orange scented one. I'm going to see if we can figure something else, something out for that. But as far as the um, like the orange scrubby soap, it probably have to be a solid soap. I don't have, I don't have the um, the other kind of lye I would need. I'm gonna have to look it up and see if I can even get it right now. Um, I used to have both to make liquid soaps, but it was it was actually kind of uh, well. Let's just say that the, the containers they come in are basically identical. And so there were a couple of times where I used the wrong line, couldn't figure out why the soap didn't turn out right. So uh, to avoid that, I just stopped using, you know, stopped ordering the other kind of lye. But um, but now that now that I order lye from a different company, the, the containers look different. I shouldn't have that mistake happen. I'm thinking that the um, if that orange scrubby soap, I've seen like solid and liquid forms of it, but the liquid form is almost like a gel. It's like a thick. It's not like watery. It's like a thick gel. And I think probably it would be like a dual lye soap. So you'd use both kinds. Um, and it would it would come out like a paste or like a cream instead of instead of like a true liquid soap. Tanya, are you guys allowed to import stuff like that from other countries? I know it would be really expensive, but like are you are you guys allowed to like order lye from another country and just have it shipped to your house? Because there were some fragrances I wanted that the only company that I could get them from was somewhere in England and they weren't shipping to the States at all. Like I could, I could go to the website and see it there, but when you go to put your address in, it wouldn't allow me to put in an address to any other country other than England. So um, I thought maybe they had stopped exporting their supplies to other countries. Oh, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> That's very true. Um, there are a lot of, like, customs uh, fees and stuff like that. That kind of sucks. I wonder if it would be worth it if you could get the light cheap enough. I'm going to mix this a little bit more. Seems like this orange oil is really loosening up the batter, which happens sometimes. Yeah, international shipping can be a really big headache. One of the biggest problems we've found is that shipping something to another country, um, a lot of times they just don't get the package. Like three months later and it still hasn't arrived and the tracking just says, you know, it was sent to that country and there's no updates for months and months and months and then like six months later we get the package back just returned like without any explanation sometimes we never get it back so it's it's true that the international shipping can be a major pain oh that's good it's good you still have some What are you shipping, Stacy? Because if it's if it's um if it's like product that's already made, like soap and stuff that's already made, you should just be able to put it in a box. If you do like um easy ship, well like easyship.com or um like there's another couple more like pirate ship and some other ones that people like. And they usually do all that for you. They fill all that out for you. And then when you print the label, it'll print the forms, like the forms already filled out, it'll print everything out for you. 
It is expensive, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> That's why I can't offer free shipping overseas because um, shipping a really tiny box costs me about twenty five dollars, and that's more than like that's like three times the cost of whatever it is that the person bought. Yeah, Tanya, that's true. Usually, if I order something overseas, I I just know that like I'm going to be paying the shipping, so it has to be something I really really want. I'm trying to find a really good, um, like, rhubarb fragrance, and there just aren't any good ones here that I have found yet, at least. Um, they're always overseas, and uh, the shipping is just is just terrible, if, if they'll even ship, which is the other thing. Oh, yeah, Stacy, I would say... Um, Put it in a box. All you really need to do is weigh the box. And then, like, if you go to... Um, don't go through, like, USPS or UPS. It's too confusing. Um, I just do, like I said, either Easy Ship or, um, like, Pirate Ship or something. And then all they do is they ask you to fill out the address. And then you have to, um, like... then And each... It's like a, like a fill out the form thing. It just tells you... It just asks you, like, like what it... Like, how much it weighs, how big the box is, um, and then what's in it. And then you just put like a gift and you could put like a gift of like, you know, um, decorations and soap or whatever so that they know what, what kind of gift it is. And then um, um, there's a spot, not on easy ship, there's a spot where you can say that the customs, like, you know how you have to pay the customs fees? You can have the, reci the recipient pay the customs fees instead of you because we found out that if you pay the customs fees ahead, like if you pay, pay it when you ship it, when the person gets the box they still have to pay those customs fees. Like it, it's like they, they get the, the, the fee twice. It's weird. So, um, just, there's like a little thing you, you check to have them pay the, um, customs fees. Cause a lot of times, you know, they just don't charge her. They, they might not even charge her, but anyway. Um, and then at the end, um, it asks you for like payment and everything. But when you go to print the label, it'll print the shipping label. And it'll also, if there is like any kind of like paperwork that needs to go with it, it'll print it out for you and they'll have it already filled out. So when you get the paperwork, you don't have to do anything with it except put it in the box. You don't have to manually like hand by hand fill it out. It's already been done for you. Yeah, Tanya, I like rhubarb. I actually like rhubarb, like the plant. I like to eat it. Um, it's good in a pie and jam and things like that, but I, I actually don't like it with strawberry. I prefer it on its own. Um, but the fragrance, um, of course, the fragrance, rhubarb fragrance, like it has to be blended with something, I think, because otherwise I don't think people really recognize what it is. But there's been a couple that I've smelled that just smelled so good. And um, yeah. It's it's a it's unfortunate that I can't find anything that'll ship to me. Yeah, I think it's just like easyship.com or something. Yeah, I love rhubarb. It's pretty easy to grow too. I'm just checking something really quick. Yeah, I'm just double checking Easy Ship. Yeah, easyship.com. Yep, yep. There we go. And I do it on the computer. I don't know how. I'm pretty sure you can do it from your phone too, but I've never tried it, so I don't know. I wouldn't be able to walk you through that. But the, but on the computer, I've done it lots of times. And they'll give you a list too, which is nice. So once you've filled out all the information, it'll take you to a list of the couriers that you want to use. Some of them are cheaper than USPS, and um. And then you can even have, some of them will even pick up the package for free. The only one I don't like for international shipping is UPS because they make you go to their main terminal to drop off the um, box or you have to pay $2 for them to pick it up. So I don't typically use them anymore. Um, and also you can choose whether or not to insure the package for a couple extra dollars. They'll put insurance on it. 
it does it all. It's like it just walks you through the steps. You just click, click, click as you go and answer the questions, and then you're done. It's so easy. And you can even save the address on there. So, like, later on you want to ship her something else, you just use, when you start to type in her name, it'll autofill all the information for you. It's really nice. Yeah, plan to forget it. Um, as long as you don't have anything there that eats it. I'm going to um, mix this up a little bit more. There we go. Okay, now it's thickening. thickening. Oh yeah, also I need to make, um, for that list of soaps that I want to be making here soon, um, one of them is that, uh, the three different shades of blue for, uh, for Shauna from Nozumi Soaps. I gotta make that also. And I think there was a couple other requests. I had to just check my list, which I don't have immediately available. So there's gonna be some stuff coming up. I just, I think I may want to wait to have my um, oils delivered. And I think what I'll do is instead of doing it the way I've been doing it, where, you know, on the first of the month, I just post all the soaps that I made, I may try just posting them as they are done curing. So that way you guys don't have to wait like a whole month to get everything. I might try that and see how that works. Um, just because I think these lives are a little bit more fun to do. And, um, but if I do them, then the soap won't. They, it'll all be like cured at different times throughout the month. So um, just wiping this clean. And I like to unplug this before I before I put my hand in here because this little blade, like if it were to come on, it could probably do some damage. So don't need any more accidents. All right. So I'll go ahead and uh, oh, I forgot to use my whisk. Oh well. All right, so here is the mold. Um, it's pretty good size. I don't know. I haven't. Uh, I haven't really used this for a full batch before, so I don't know how much of this is going to, you know, how much, how many of these is going to make. But we'll see. Just checking your guys' comments real quick. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, if it's poisonous, that's even better. Just put it all around your garden. Keep everything out. Little fence of poisonous plants. That's good. Animal print soap. Um, i trying to think how I would do that. I think I could do that. Yeah. That's probably... I know it's possible to do. I think I could do it. Okay, yeah. This is starting to thicken finally. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I think I'll do these flowers. Um, the Like the daisy type flowers first. And then we'll do the rest. I think we'll have enough batter, but... Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. This came out really nice. It's a really nice creamy white color. I'm hoping it looks um, nice when it comes out too. I think it will. I'm also gonna um, go ahead and put it in the like in the oven to stay warm because I want it to go through gel, uh, just so that it's even a harder bar than I mean it already will be. Oops. Yeah, this completely filled. Okay, perfect. Let's top off some of these others. And this one. I have to be careful because the floors here are not level. So, like, it looks like it could take some more here. But when you look over here, it's, like, at the edge. So, trying not to cause it to overflow on me. Okay, it looks like that tulip in the middle could still use some. Hold on. Yep. Yeah, this is thickening up a lot. Just trying to get it to settle. Okay. And for the last couple drops of batter here, um, let's see. I wasn't sure if we'd have any left over. Let me go grab something. Hmm. I don't think it'll fill a whole one of those ovals. Well, let's see. I have a box of old molds that I don't use up here. 
probably going to get rid of them, but we'll see. Hmm. I'll just go ahead and use the oval anyway. Hmm. I don't know. It's not even going to, it's not going to do anything. I have a better idea. I'm just going to go ahead and keep adding it to these and just hope it doesn't overflow because there's so little left at the bottom. There we go. This one could probably take a few more drops. We'll just keep going around until I've used it up. So good. So far, so good. It looks like we are going to be successful with this. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Tanya. I used um, orange orange essential oil, and I mixed it with a little bit of kale and clay. That's what was in here. Yeah, it was it was just the essential oil that I put in here. It's orange. Um, I mix it with a little bit of kale and clay. I don't normally um, soak the fragrance beforehand, but I went ahead and tried it this time. I know a lot of people swear by that, so. Um, yep, so I went ahead and tried that, and then, uh, I mixed that in with the oils after I had stick blended it a little bit, or, yeah. Alright, actually, I don't need this thing on my head anymore. There we go. I always forget to take it off. You can see it's starting to thicken because it's holding its shape when I pour it on top. So that's good. There we go. Okay, I think I'll leave that. Probably good enough for now. Yeah, it will smell nice and fresh. Yeah, I was considering using lemon. Lemon. I didn't have a lot of lemon essential oils, though. And I did have lemongrass, but I put that... There's another bar I make that uses, like, lemongrass and rosemary and stuff. Um, and then I made the um, mint. I was going to put mint, but I recently made that mint and rosemary soap. So I thought, you know, let's just do orange by itself this time. And we'll see. I'm perfectly happy to keep making this and uh, using different oils. That's totally fine. I bet lime would smell amazing, though. I only have a tiny, tiny bottle of the lime, lime oil. And it looks like I do have a little bit of the soap left over. So, um, I'm going to try something, <clears throat> something top secret. That would be cute, yeah. I wonder what a coconut mold would look like, though. It'd probably just be round. I wonder if it would be possible to do like, um, like a palm tree, maybe, and then, <clears throat> and then do like a coconut fragrance with, uh, with lime. Maybe that would work. And I could stick those little paper umbrellas in it. Just have to take the umbrella off before you use the soap. <laughs> have to kill you after I tell you the secret. Well, what I'm going to do is save the secret because I'm going to um, show it on another live. 
And so I just wanted to like save it for later because, you know, I think it'll be cool to do it all at the same time, essentially. I did make a um, a coconut and like pineapple, like a like a tropical soap once. It had um, banana and um, and pineapple and a coconut, and I had little tiny um, pineapple embeds that I made to put on top of the soap. It was really cute, and then the soap itself was like blue and white swirls, like the water. So I was going for like a I don't know, like island ocean theme. That was a long time ago. I might have to do that again uh, this summer, though. That might be kind of fun. Just reading what you're saying here. I don't think I've heard of either of those, Tanya. At least not by those names. Mei Chang. What are those? I haven't heard of those. I'll have to look them up later because those aren't ones that I've heard of. Um, what do you put them in? Do you put them in your uh, dish soap? Salt or sugar scrubs? Um, sort of. I've made those salt soaps that are that have all that uh, sea salt in them um, that are pretty scrubby. Um, I've made sugar scrubs for myself. But I haven't tried, you know, selling them. I haven't, uh, I haven't put any in my shop before. Um, but I make the bath salts and, um, I've made like body butter, which I'll probably make, I'll probably make that Saturday because like I said, I've got, I had a request for it, um, an order for it. Um, hmm. I used to make this, um like pedicure thing where you'd soak your feet. Um, I had like the special salt for it. And then I had stuff like that, but not, not the sugar. No, I haven't sold the sugar scrubs before. Oh, 
Oh, it's the same one, Tanya? Okay. I'll look it up then. Yeah, the Shinger Scrubs, um, the issue I had with them is that you, they have to be in a really, like, airtight container, otherwise they get kind of watery. And, um, I just felt kind of, like, I know a lot of people use the Shinger Scrubs for, like, scrubbing their lips and stuff, and I always feel weird keeping something like that, like, stored, like, if you're going to reuse it, like, like, um, not reuse it, but, like, I would prefer like a one-time use thing with something like that. Cause I don't like the idea of like, you know, scrubbing my lips with it. And then, and I know I'm not reusing the same sugar, but I mean like the idea of putting my hands back in the container or taking more out of the container. Um, just because without like a preservative or something that could kind of go rancid and I wouldn't want to put something like that on my mouth. Um, but that's just uh, me kind of being like, there's certain things like that that kind of weird me out. And that's one of them. I like them like in little Ziploc bags where you can like use like the whole bag at, at one time, like the little tiny baggies. Uh, you use the whole thing at once. Um, something like that where you're not reaching back into the jar because um, every time you, you reach into the jar, potentially you're getting like, you know, germs and things in there. Um, also, every time you open the jar it's, ex jar, it's exposing it to air and getting in moisture. So I would have to, if I was to do sugar scrubs, it'd have to be little tiny jars just so that they didn't get like collect water each time they're open. Um, and uh, yeah, but I might try it. Oh, lemongrass, lime and lemon. Yeah, that would smell really good. Stacy, is it does it form like a solid clump or is it just like clumpy like a uh, like like wet sand? Because it's supposed to be kind of clumpy like wet sand, but it shouldn't form like a solid like a solid rock solid clump. Oh yeah, it shouldn't be a clump, solid clump. Are you adding any water? Because I wouldn't add water to that. Because usually if I make a sugar scrub, it's something like um, like uh, solid and liquid oils mixed with the sugar. I don't put like water in it, brown sugar. Try it with white sugar, but make a tiny amount. Don't make like a huge jar of it just to test. Just make a little tiny bit and try white sugar instead. Yeah, no water. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to see the recipe. Hmm. Was the, oh, was the honey crystallizing? If the honey crystallizes, it'll make solid, solid clumps like that. I think Tanya, she's making the, um, the sugar scrub that doesn't have the soap in it. I might be wrong. Like the kind for your lips. Where it's just like oils and sugar, basically. And then uh, you scrub it on your lips like a lip mask. And then you wash it off. But the, the sugar scrub for your body, then yeah, you would add that to soap. Oh, Pinterest, yeah. Um, yeah, but Stacey, were you, were you doing the one that was like for your lips? Or were you doing the one that you with the soap that you use for your body? Oh, for the body. It shouldn't, I mean, it shouldn't be clumpy. Was it like a melt and pour soap? Or were you making, making soap from scratch? Yeah, anything off of Pinterest is going to be dodgy. Pretty much. It's sort of like those videos from, I don't even want to say the name on here because I don't want to give them publicity, but um, those like so-called viral hack type videos where they 
the where it's like clickbait title and a clickbait image and then you go there and they show you all these really quick like craft ideas or you know hack ideas and and there's like no way that those are going to work or you end up hurting yourself and pinterest can have a lot of stuff like that on there some of them are okay but a lot of times you get stuff that that's just not going to work But if you're making the soap from scratch, it shouldn't get clumpy. Well, if you're um, <clears throat> if you're making it from um, okay, so if you're making the soap from scratch, like the way I make it, the cold process soap, it shouldn't get clumpy like that. If you're using melt and pour soap, like the soaps you get from the store, like the craft store, you melt them down or whatever. Um, as soon as anything like makes that soap cold, it'll solidify. So you might actually have to, um, like, add the sugar slowly so that it doesn't shock the soap and make it cold and, and clump up. Yeah, caster sugar is nice. Caster sugar is, um, is, like, finer than regular sugar, but not as fine as powdered sugar. So that's a really good one to use if you can get it. Oh, it didn't have any soap in it. Oh, what were you? How? What was the recipe? Do you remember? Was it just the? Was it just oil? Was it just oil and uh, sugar, and honey? Maybe there is something in the lemon juice doing it. Other than that, like the honey um, crystallizing, that could cause it. Um, I mean, I don't know. Without seeing the recipe, it'd be really hard to say. Oh, okay. I'll look up um some different, like, easier, like, to do at home recipes, and maybe I can share those sometime if I can, uh, if I can find a good one that's easy to replicate. That way you could give it another try. Oh. Yeah, I haven't made any of it on camera. Definitely not. Um, but I, I can definitely do that. I mean, I can just, uh, I can see what recipes I have that would be fun to do on camera. I'm just tapping the soap mold, trying to get the bubbles out. Yeah, what Tanya said, if you um, if you mix the sugar in with something like like soap, it should work a lot better. The sugar should stay more suspended. You can get um, the Stevenson's. Um, they have the bath whip. I've heard of people using it with the melt and pour also. Um, although I never tried it with melt and pour. I've only tried it in cold process soap. Um, but yeah, Stevenson's, uh, if you get the Stevenson brand, it, it works really good. I've, I've used their melt and pour before. It's really nice. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to set this stuff in the kitchen. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Oh yeah, I need to check out those those uh, diamond paintings. Yeah, I need to organize too. I've been organizing everything here. It's a little bit overwhelming, but I've made some progress, so that's good. Also, guys, um, feel free to put in here, either in the chat or in the description, um, if you have a YouTube channel or your Instagram page or any of your social media, that way we can share and get the word out. Even if you're watching the replay, feel free to do that. As you guys know, it's something that Felicia from The Crafting Nook always does, and I thought it was a really um, kind gesture, so I wanted to extend that to everybody else here. Oh, my cat wants to say hello. Where's the bean? Come here so they can say hi. They can't see you over there. Oh, okay then. <laughs> he knows. Come here. Oh, wait, I know. I thought I could show him the uh, the red dot, but he thought the red dot was on the floor, so he jumped down. All right, then. Come up. Let's see if we can show him the dot on the table. Where, baby? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Like, you want to sit down and say hi? Yeah, I'll take my gloves off. That's probably what I should have done in the beginning. There. So it's just out of frame. Oh no, Stacy, how sad. <laughs> I bet he was upset about that. Oh, oh, the poor kitty. Did he forgive you? Yep, they will tell you about it. Mine likes to wake me up in the morning if there's no food. Oh, good. Good. Glad to hear that he is, uh, that all is forgiven and that he's happy again. Come here. Come say hi. I think he knows. He's like, I know the camera's there, so I don't want to. Come here. Oh. There. That's better. Yeah. Say hi, baby. Look. Oh, there. That's better. Okay. He wants to run across the floor. Okay, okay. Here you go. Look, it's over here. There. And he's off. That's really what he wanted to do. <laughs> oh, well. I guess this cat has decided <laughs> I'm done. Oh. He 
He's starstruck, yes. Yeah, he's a good boy. He was um he was orphaned as a kitten. His mom um was hit by a car. And uh so we bottle fed him from when he was six days old, so he's a good boy. Yeah. Come here. The troubling thing, though, is he likes to chase these laser lasers, but he knows that the laser, like the dot, is made from the toy that you, you know, the actual like laser that you hold. So he'll watch my hand instead of looking for the laser on the ground. Like he's waiting. Like I guess he's expecting the dot to like come out of the toy, but he doesn't understand that it. He's not going to be able to see it in the air. So it takes him a minute to like look on the ground for it. It's kind of funny. Like he's too smart for his own good. It's not helping him. Yes, yeah, cute. They know. They're like, oh, I know that's the that's the laser toy. I recently downloaded one of those apps that has a little swimming fish for them to play with. And, <laughs> and uh, it has an, another option that has, um, here, I'll, I'll load it and show you. Instead of just the, um, the swimming fish, it also has a mouse. It's like a little box with a mouse in it. And the mouse runs around. Um, see if you can see that. See? Little mouse running around. And if you, if you hit the mouse... See, it makes little dots, and if you catch it, it'll stop moving, and it'll have little X eyes. It's cute. Well, anyways, there you go. See, it has little X eyes. Anyways, um, the problem is he likes this. He likes this game, but the problem is that he he realizes that when he's touching the um, when he when he catches the mouse, like he he realizes that his paw isn't actually like doing anything, so he puts his his paws underneath the phone. And tries to get it from underneath. And so he has lots of fun. But he's doing it wrong. <laughs> You're doing it wrong sir. But I guess it's good that he likes to play. And that those little apps like actually do something. And if you do want those apps um, for your cats, I know that Friskies makes one, but apparently now they make it so that if you want to use the app, you have to make a Friskies account and sign in every time you want to use it. Um, this one is called um, Cat Alone 2 and does not require like an account or anything like that, and it's free. And it has different options here. I'll show you. Might as well. <clears throat> So it gives you a bunch of different different options. So this one's the fish. Um, this is like a little glow bug, like a lightning bug. This is the mouse that I showed you. Um, this is a dandelion. And see it, the little the little dandelion seeds will float away, and then they explode. Um, and then the other one, the feather is kind of cute. The feather sticks out from the side. See. And then if you catch it, um, where'd it go? This is hard to do at a funny angle. <laughs> there we go. It, it like does that little explosion animation. So it has a lot of cute ones um, that all come with the that come with the app. Yeah, Stacy, you gotta share the phone with him. Put some cat toys on there, or give him a get like a tablet for him. Of course, you'll go out and buy a tablet just for your cat, and then he'll never use it. He'll play with the box instead. 
because you know that's what they do. Well, I need to get to, um, I need to go turn the oven off and I need to, um, finish some work. One sec. Let me turn off the oven before it gets too hot. Okay, cut the oven. Oh, yeah. Yep. Crinkled up plastic and paper and... Yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. It was great to have you all on here. And um, I, will, I am planning to do the unmolding of those soaps on... Um, on Saturday, and then hopefully we can also make the body butter. I just need to make sure I have everything. I think I do. And then uh, I'll be getting in the other oil so that we can make the rest of those soaps that we had planned. I'll probably just do that. I'll probably just do lives for now. Um, on Mondays and Thursdays instead of my uploads. Unless there's something that I need to get done ahead of time. So I'll let you guys know. I'm going to have a great night, guys, and uh, happy 2022 as usual, and I will see you all soon.